Let's take a look at how we perform operations on vectors. R supports something called as vectorized operations that you need to understand in order to make effective use of R. After completing this lecture, you'll be able to do all of these things. You'll be able to explain how vectorized operations work, how vectorized operations can be used to manipulate vectors. You'll also be able to explain how R behaves when vectors and scalars are mixed in a single expression. Scalar is the opposite of a vector. So for example, the number 5 is a scalar, whereas 5, 10, 15, 20, etc. may together be in a vector. So when you combine, uh, mix scalars and vectors, how does R behave? And finally, when you have vectorized operations, normally we'll perform these operations on vectors of the same length, but sometimes the vectors may be of different lengths, and in those cases R has a certain peculiar way of behaving which is also something you'll be able to understand. Okay, so let's jump right into it, vectorized operations 1. So I create a vector called salaries, which has the three numbers, 5,000, 10,000, and 12,000. And suppose we just want to increase each of these numbers by 10%. Okay, in other words, that's the equivalent, equivalent of giving everybody a 10% raise. So all you have to do is to say salaries is assigned salaries times 1.1. Okay, so notice that normally we tend to think of multiplication operator as applying to two numbers, right? So 5 times 2, 10 times 3. That's the way we look at it. But here what we have is salaries is a vector and this 1.1 is actually a scalar number. It's just one number. However, R behaves how we would expect it to behave. What it does in this scenario is it multiplies each of those elements by 1.1. So that's an example of a vectorized operation. So when you do that and you see the results, you see that all of those, now each of those numbers has increased by 10%. Okay, so that's the idea here. So the crux of vectorized operations really is really taking place right here. When we multiply salaries by 1.1, salaries is a vector, 1.1 is just a scalar, but R is still able to manage and do the right thing. So let's take another example. I've got prices, 5, 10, 15, quantities, 1, 2, 4. So maybe these are prices of some items that we bought at a store and the quantities represent how many of each item we bought. So for example, we bought one of the first item, two of the second item and four of the third item. So now we want to find out what our total bill is, right? So you can just say, first of all, we want, we can just say amounts is prices times quantities, which means multiply each element by its corresponding element in the other vector. So 5 times 1 is 5, 10 times 2 is 20, 15 times 4 is 60 and that's what you'll see here, 5, 20, 60. Okay, so once again you're saying something multiplied by something. Normally we are used to the multiplication operator being used just on individual numbers but here we are using the multiplication operator on vectors and what R does is it element by element performs the corresponding operation that we are requesting. Let's take another example. I've got weights and of course this is something we already saw. I can just say weights times 2. It's the same thing that we did when we gave the 10% increment to everyone and it does the job. Okay, so specifically how this actually works is R converts scalars to vectors when needed. So internally you can think of R as saying oh here I've got weights which is a vector of five elements and here I'm supposed to multiply it by just one single number. So let me convert this number also into a vector of five elements. In other words, create a vector with two, 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 five twos, right? And then element by element perform the corresponding operation. Okay, so then this, the, this is the result you're going to get. So this two, although it's a scalar, we can think of it as if R is looking at it as a vector of the same size as the other vector that we have provided. So that's what I meant by R convert scalars to vectors whenever needed in these sorts of operations. Okay, now we come to scenarios when the, when the vectors multiplied are not of the same length. Okay, this is something we would uh, rarely do except for multiplying with scalars. We would not do this, but you know, it's something that is uh, just worth knowing about. Okay, so prices is 5, 10, 15, 20, quantities is 1, 2. So now if you do prices times quantities, what R is going to do is basically convert this vector quantities to be of the same size as the vector prices. In other words, it's going to say repeat 1, 2 once more 
and therefore it now has a vector of four elements and then it does the necessary multiplication. So 5 times 1, 10 times 2, 15 times 1, 20 times 2. Okay, So it recycles the smaller vector and it does the job. Okay, And as expected 5 times 1 is 5, 10 times 2 is 20, 15 times 1 is 15, 20 times 2 is 40 as expected. Okay, So what it did in this particular case is it converted the smaller vector to the suitable size of the larger vector by replicating its elements or by recycling its elements. Okay, Now this is now, of course, you can apply vectorized operations not just to numbers, but you can also apply them to strings and so on. So, for example, if you remember, we learned the function paste earlier. So, I've got two vectors and now I'm saying paste the first vector to the second vector. And as with numbers, the way this is going to work is it's going to perform the same function operation pairwise on the corresponding elements of the two vectors. So, for example, it's going to print out Jenna Lee. Jenna is the first element here. Lee is the second element here. So it's going to paste those two together and then it's going to paste uh, Chris Mason and then it's going to paste Jason Masters and Zuan Cheng. Okay, So that's exactly what we expect. So vectorized operations apply not just to numbers but also to character strings. So here I've got a vector x which has got the values 1 and 2 and the vector y just got the values 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. The point to note here is of course that the first vector is of length 2, the second vector is of length 5. Okay, So then what happens is when R recycles the elements of 1, 2 to make it 5 elements, it will do 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. Right? So the last time both of the elements of the vector x are not really used. Okay? So in this case R will generate a warning. If you do x star y, it will do the job Right, it's going to multiply 1, 10, 1 times 10, 2 times 20, 1 times 30, 2 times 40, then 1 times 50. Okay, and that's the result that you see here. But it gives us a warning saying, look, the longer object length is not a multiple of the shorter object length, not a full multiple. In other words, this was 2, this was 5. So it's not an integral multiple of the uh, smaller element size, smaller vector size, and therefore it's just generating a warning message. Okay. Now again, I repeat, we will very rarely resort to multiplying vectors when they are not of the same size. Only scenario is would we often multiply vectors by scalars. That we often do and we know how that